The Spectrum tab is the engine from which a huge variety of luminosity selections across the entire tonal spectrum can easily be generated. It represents a significant change from the previous panels. The new interface includes a tonal spectrum background to help you visualize the tones from dark to light. The buttons to create the various selections are arranged against this background to approximate the tonal range selected when the button is clicked. It's not entirely accurate since some of the button widths had to be adjusted to allow for the written labels. Also, the natural feathering of luminosity selections extends the actual selection beyond the width of the button. However, the relative positioning of the buttons and their widths provide a visual map that allows users to make better choices about which selection to choose. As we saw in the last chapter, in addition to generating an active selection, the buttons in the Spectrum tab also generate a corresponding 16-bit luminosity mask channel on the Channels panel called New Selection. This channel can be used to visualize the selection. As I also showed in the last chapter, Apply Image can be used to directly apply the 16-bit channel as a 16-bit layer mask without any intermediate 8-bit selections, although taking the step is unlikely to provide any real advantage because the V4 panel derives all its selections from a 16-bit workflow anyway. The X button above the logo on the Spectrum tab removes the new selection channel mask if it's not needed in order to keep the channels panel clean. This isn't a big problem since there will only ever be one new selection channel present on the channels panel at a time. As we saw, pressing another Spectrum button removes the prior new selection channel and replaces it with a new one. As you make adjustments to an image, the luminosity selections that will be generated are constantly changing to match the current state of the tones in the image. If you want to save a particular new selection as it is for future use, simply give it a new name. Now it will not be removed and replaced the next time a Spectrum tab button is clicked. Once you've clicked a Spectrum tab button to load an active selection, you need to decide what to do next. This is what all the colored buttons in the top portion of the panel are for. For example, if I wanted to make a tonal adjustment to the lighter tones in the image, I might start by pressing the Lights 2 button to load that selection, which I already did, and then I would click the plus or minus View button to view the selection, if the red overlay indicates that the adjustment will be targeted to the areas of the image that I want to adjust, I would click the View button again to turn off the overlay. Then I could click the Curves button in the upper portion of the panel, and this will generate a Curves Adjustment layer with the Lights to Luminosity Mask attached. Adjustments can then be made by double-clicking on the Curves Adjustment layer to open up the Properties panel. And if I decide that I don't want to make that adjustment, as long as I have that adjustment layer active, I can then just click the Delete Layer button. The names for many of the luminosity masks have changed since the early versions of the panel. For those familiar with the original names Tony used for luminosity masks, they were replaced with simpler number designations in the V3 panel, and that numbering system continues in the V4 panel. For example, the old Lights selection is now Lights 1. Light Lights is Lights 2, Bright Lights is Lights 3, Super Lights is Lights 4, and Ultra Lights is Lights 5. The written manual for the V4 panel, which can be found in the download folder, includes a table that provides a cross-reference between all the old and new names if you need it. The top five lines of buttons in the Spectrum tab generate the classic lights, midtones, and darks series of luminosity selections. The lights series always includes the lightest tones in the image and progressively removes midtones as the series progresses. The dark series always selects the darkest tones in the image and removes more midtones as the series progresses. The midtone series is centered on middle gray. 
The mid-tone 1 selection doesn't show any marching ants because no pixels are more than 50% selected. But the selection indicator on the V4 panel shows us that the selection is there. And if we view it with the View button, we can see where that mid-tone 1 selection is. The mid-tone selections are created by selecting all the tones in the image and then subtracting one of the light series masks and the corresponding dark series mask from that. This series begins with narrow mid-tones and expands into more and more mid-tones as the series progresses. And remember that the size and placement of the buttons indicates the general range and value of the tones that each button selects. Those are the basics of how I use the classic luminosity selection buttons in the V4 panel. In the next chapters, I'll also cover the basics of the zone and half zone masks, multi-zone masks, and color base masks. For in-depth instruction on how I use the various luminosity selections and masks as part of my image developing workflow, you can refer to my video series called The Complete Guide to Luminosity Masks.